Blender for Noobs. Hello, this is Dan Nobles and welcome to Blender for Noobs. In this video, what I'd like to do is fast track you on a way to learning Blender. If you're uh, just starting out with Blender and maybe you know some things about other programs and you know familiar with using the computer and all that stuff, you don't want to wait around trying to get up to speed on a program like Blender. Uh, the point of this is to hopefully give you a quick a quick start guide to Blender so you'll be up and running in no time. By no means, you know, you'll know everything when you get done. It just gets you to the point where you're familiar with the interface, you're a little bit familiar with how to start modeling and moving around in the interface, and that way when you go and look at tutorials online and things like that, you're all ready to, to start with some good tutorials and get going. So let's take a look at Blender. Uh, as you've seen from the splash screen there, right now I'm using Blender 2.68a. The one thing that I'm not going to cover in this tutorial is downloading and installing Blender. Uh, if you haven't done that, just look at my uh, video tutorial on that. I think it's number two. I'll put a link in the description for that. So, when you first start up Blender, you've got it installed, you bring it up. This is pretty much what you see. You see a screen with a cube in the middle of it. You see a camera out here. You see a sun. And that is pretty much it. Uh, as far as the interface, it shows some tools over here. It shows some properties and it shows the outliner uh, as well as the animator screen. So I'm going to show you a basic way to set up Blender uh, that should work for most people. I mean, you can customize Blender out the yin yang. I mean, you can change the fonts, change the colors, change the panels, all kinds of great stuff. But I'm going to show you a, a very good basic way to get started. First, what we're going to do is we're going to change the interface, the windows a little bit. So what I usually do is I, I have three views. I have a top view, a front view that I put over here on the side, and then a, a side view over here. So let's do that. First thing you're going to want to do is hit T to get rid of that tools menu. T is an important keyboard shortcut to remember. It just toggles those tools back and forth. Another one on this interface is N, and it shows some properties over here. And I just toggle that off. And by the way, I have my screencast keys on, so down here you can see which keys I'm pressing. So the first thing we want to do is get rid of this uh, animation window here. And the way to do that is just come down here where you get the double arrow, right click, and we're going to do a join area. And you'll see as you move your mouse, that up and down arrow going back. And we're just going to push this down so that this uh, screen here takes over the entire uh, view. Okay, so now we want to make uh, some more windows. So in order to do that, just come up here to this little triangle looking thing here and just select it and drag it out. And drag it out to about right there. And then I'm going to split this one in half. So what you want to do is come down to this triangle here and just pull it up. And that splits it in half there. So right now they're all, they all say user perspective on top. Uh, what we want to do is we want to change that. So in order to do that, your keyboard, or your numpad, I'm sorry, is, is the uh, controller of your views, basically. And you'll get, you know, as you, as you use them, you'll get used to them. But I'm going to hit 7, which is the top view. Uh, it's always by default in perspective, and I like it to be orthographic. So if you hit numpad 5, it puts it into orthographic view. So I have my top ortho here. And over here on the right top, I'm going to make this the uh, front. So I hit 1 and 5 to make it ortho. So there's the front view. And down here, I'm going to make this a, a right side view. You can make it left or right. But I'm going to hit 3 and make this the right side and hit 5 to make it ortho. Okay. So this is kind of the basic setup I use. Uh, you do want to keep your outliner and you want to keep this property screen always uh, unless you're doing something different but I think uh, probably 99.9% .9 of the time you'll want these. So we'll leave those there and as you go along we want to save what we're doing. You'll save these preferences. So just come up to file and go to 
save startup file and it'll, it'll ask you and just click OK and you can see the shortcut is control U to do that as well. There are shortcut keys for pretty much everything you do in Blender. Um, Blender is a very much a uh, keyboard keystroke type program where you have different keys that do different things. Don't freak out about that. There are a lot of people find out that you know oh you have all these keys that you got to remember. Don't worry about that. I'm going to show you the basic keys that you need to start out with, and as you take tutorials and move further in Blender you'll pick these other keys up as you go along. I mean, you may not pick it up the first time, but the next time you go to do it, you'll you'll think, hey, I know there was a way to do that before, and you'll look it up and you'll find out about it. And as you go along, you'll just pick up more and more of these keyboard shortcuts. Don't worry about it. Um, also, the other thing is Blender, of course, is not just a modeling program. You have animation, compositing, camera tracking, you know, all these different things you can do with Blender, even a game engine. Um, I am concentrating right now on getting you up and running on the modeling part because that is like the, you know, pretty much the jump off point. Um, I do mostly modeling myself. I don't get much into anything else. I get a little bit into animation, a little bit into uh, compositing, things like that. But modeling is my main thing. And, you know, if you think about it, Pretty much whatever you do involves modeling to, to begin with, so it's a good, very good starting point anyway. So what else do we need to tweak here in order to get started? Well, what you're going to want to do is go to File and go to User Preferences and click on the Interface. And you can kind of look this over. I don't really change anything off the bat here, but you can look and see if there's anything that you might want to change. Uh, go to Editing. Uh, again, I don't really change anything by default here. And then go to input. And there is one thing that I change right off the bat here, and that is the select mouse key. And I choose it to be left. By default, it's the right. I come mainly from a Windows world, so I use my left, left mouse, mouse button to click. Uh, Add-ons. Don't need to worry about this right now. Uh, you can see that I've added a the screencast key so you can see which keys I punch here but basically the add-ons are all kinds of little helper programs that allow you to do more things in Blender that aren't loaded up automatically with Blender and the way you load these is you find you know what you need you just click the box and it's there it's just completely there you don't have to save you don't have to do anything you just close this window and it's there themes like I said, you can change the color and the style of Blender ad infinitum. I mean, you can really go crazy with it. I pretty much leave mine the way it is out of the box. Go to the file system. Uh, these are like the save versions and things like that. I usually keep this as default. Go to the system settings. And one important thing here that you might want to look at is your compute device, which is basically the rendering, um, you know, your render graphics card. Right now, by default, you can see it's using the CPU. If you have an NVIDIA card and you see CUDA here, you're going to want to select that. As soon as I do on mine, you can see that it selected my graphics card. The reason for this is we're going to be using Blender Cycles to render out things. And Cycles is, is um, well, let's say that the render engine is pretty intense. Um, so you want to get the most power out of it that you can and if you have like an AMD card or something like that I mean I, I did a while back and I, I finally bit the bullet and I said you know I gotta get an NVIDIA card again and just to use the uh, this feature because it makes your renders a lot faster and as far as the user preferences that's good to start out with so you just X out of this window here and you can come back to your uh, save startup file and just make sure you save that a few other settings that we want to make right off the bat is come over to your properties here and you want to be on your render little camera here and this is really up to you but I usually start out with a 1280 by 720 uh, resolution size and I make this 100 which means just means that it's the full size and then come down to your performance and we want to make this 128 by 128 it's generally going to work for your uh, renders. What is what this is your tile size is the size of the uh, 
the tiles as it renders your image. Oh, one thing I forgot to show you, the Blender Render is on by default. That's the internal Blender Render engine. It's quick, but it's not as nice as the Cycles Render. So you want to change this to the Cycles Render. Um, Blender Render internal render engine is pretty much, it's probably going to be included with Blender for a while, but it's, it's really on its way out. Everybody's pretty much gone over to the Cycles Render Engine, so the tutorials that you see, especially the ones I do, will always be Cycles because it's such a better render engine. So once you change that to Cycles Render, you will see down under the render settings, you'll see sampling. Actually, you'll also see this device up here, which right now is set to CPU, and I'm gonna change that to GPU Compute, which is the graphics processing unit, using your graphics card to render Okay, so, and you want to go to sampling, and again, this is a personal preference, but just for our render images, I'm going to set this at 100. I'm going to leave the preview at 10, and I'll show you what these do in a little bit. That is pretty much the basic setup that I do. I want to make sure that ambient occlusion is turned off, and then I'm going to go back up to our save startup file and save that. Okay, so let's look a little bit around this interface to see what we have because, you know, all these menus here and everything might be a little bit confusing if you've never used Blender before, but when, once we break it down, I think, um, you know, it'll start to become less of a mystery. Of course, you have, you know, your file, all the things that you might find under a file. You can export, import, save, new, all that stuff. Pretty standard, but uh, the Add menu is adding your uh, different objects, like you can add your uh, different graphical objects and create curves and things like uh, adding a camera, lamp, things like that. Then you have a render screen. I never really go to this menu. I just hit F12 to render most of the time. Uh, of course, your window screen and a help screen. Now you can see here on this setting it's default. You can actually change this to animation compositing and different things depending on what you're using in Blender at the time. Uh, most of the time I will leave this at default and create my own screens because I mean these are you know kind of like presets if you're doing certain things but I, again I like to set it up my own way. So we'll leave it at default. The scene setting, uh, you can actually plus mark here and create a new scene. And that means, of course, that like if you're, you, say if you modeled a car and you've got a good view of it, and maybe you're animating it or something, and you've got your camera set up, and then you want to maybe set it up differently where you have it, I don't know, the camera on the other side showing it going away from the camera, something like that. You can create a new scene and change all those things without, you know, changing your your setup for the first one, and also without creating a whole new file just to to create a new uh, render or something like that. And then, of course, we're on the cycles render. You got some information here about, um, you know, once you click on an object, you'll see the number of vertices, faces, and things like that. Just an informational screen. And speaking of informational screens, if you get your double arrow here and just drag this down, you'll see some information here. This is basically the behind the scenes programming information that Blender's spitting out as you're doing things. The only time that I ever really use this is basically when I'm doing something like I'm exporting an object from Blender into something like 3DS or something different and I'm not getting a good export, sometimes I'll bring this down and just see if I have an error. Now, when I look at the error, I have no clue what it means, but at least it's telling me that there's an error there and I know something went wrong. And really, that's the only time I look at this screen. So I'm gonna push that back up, and then we'll look at our individual windows that we created. Now, right now, they're all set on the 3D view where we can see our object, but you can use these as different things like we'll come over here and we'll say you know maybe we, we want to go to UV image editor and we can open we can go to image open an image and we can uh, bring up an image from you know whatever image we saved 
that we can kind of refer to as we're working on things. Um, you'll see all kinds of windows in here that are, you know, functions that you can do. Don't panic. There's a lot of them, but to tell you the truth, I only use a few of these things. I'll just go through them very quickly. This timeline graph editor and dope sheet is mainly used for animation. So you may not even get into those until you start wanting to do some animation. NLA editor, I have never used. Um, and there's the image editor that I just showed you. This also uh, comes into play when you're doing, um, you're starting to do texturing and UV mapping. You got a video sequence editor. I've never really used that. Movie clip editor, a text editor, node editor. I use quite a bit uh, because with the cycles render, you will um, when you create materials. You know, say you want to put like a plasticky material on, on something, or or maybe a, a steel looking material, shiny material, whatever. You can come into this node editor and you can tweak the settings of that. So that is used quite a bit. Logic Editor, I don't really use that. Uh, the Properties is what you see over here. This is set at Properties right now, so it's showing all this. And Outliner is this here. And basically what that does is it keeps track of your objects. So say instead of a cube, I am really um, calling this a box. Say it's a box that I'm creating that's going to be in a warehouse on a shelf. Oh, I don't want to name it cube. I'm going to come in here and control click in here and I'm just going to call it, you know, box or something. But this is how you basically how you organize your parts in Blender. And uh, I mean, you know, you create, say, if you create a sphere or a cylinder or a curve, whatever, all those default names are going to show up in the outliner. And you don't want to leave them at that, you know, at at that name. The, the proper way to do it is start naming what your objects really are. You know, not only that so you can find what you're doing, but if you ever share your file with somebody else, um, especially if you're selling your models, you will want to, you know, be kind of professional and, and have those things named and everything. And that's how you do it with the outliner. Now the outliner also, you'll notice you have some settings over here and you can actually hide things toggle this on and off. Uh, you can turn the selection off if you don't want to be able to select something. Now the only way I can select this is I gotta turn this back on. And you can turn the render off if you don't want it showing up in your scene when you render an image of it. You can just turn the render of, of it off and you can do you know individual things in the scene. Say if you didn't want that particular piece to show up in the scene you can turn the render off and on. So that's the outliner go back here and we have user preferences which is really the same thing as what we went to here and I never use it in a window here I always bring it up by the file so it's just a another way they have it's you know put in here I guess for convenience the info file same thing that was the one that I dragged down so I don't ever use it here I always drag it down from there because it's just easier uh, you have a file browser, and if you're into creating scripts and things like that, you have a Python console. So, again, not to worry too much about all the stuff in here. Just be aware that it's there, and every time you change to something, your menus here change. So I'm going to put this back to 3D view. Okay, so now you have a little bit of an idea of what these menus are. Let's start to look at the, the 3D modeling world. So if we look at our uh, screen here, I'm holding down the middle mouse button and I'm just kind of rolling around so I can get different views of my object. Um, you'll want to get used to that because you'll be moving around quite a bit in Blender. If you roll your mouse wheel, it's zoom. And now that, we've, that I've selected the left select, when I select, you've selected your object. So what else? do we have in the scene? You'll, well, you see that we have a grid and uh, that comes in useful when you're starting to use the grid to map out your object or to move your object or scale or whatever. Um, you'll have a lamp. Notice when you select your lamp you have another setting over here and it's just set on a point lamp. You can make it a sun, a spot, a hemi, 
area lamp, all that. And you can change the size of it and the power of it and all that good stuff. Um, you have a camera. Notice when you select a camera, you have a camera menu over here and you can do a lot of different settings with a camera. And we're going to get into that a little bit as well. And now that I think about it, um, I did. I should have went through these settings here because this is very important as well. Um, in your properties menu, like I said, this properties menu you'll want to keep up here all the time because this is something that you're constantly working with while you're doing your modeling. So we'll just go through uh, some of these that are uh, available here. Of course we looked at the render window a little bit. Tons of settings for rendering. Uh, we can go into the actual render layer. That gets into having different layers of your render scene. I use this sometimes but to tell you the truth, I don't use it a whole lot and you can get away pretty much without using it at all unless you get heavy into a scene. You have your scene settings. In here you can find things like um, the units of the grid. You can change them. By default they're none. You can change them to metric and imperial. Uh, if you're actually creating something true to scale. And to tell you the truth, I mean that's the main thing I've ever used the scene settings for. but. As you go along, you'll learn more of these settings. And then there's the world setting. The important thing here is the background color. When you do a render, this is the color that the background's going to look. So you'll want to set that to something like, you know, whatever you want it to be. You also have ambient occlusion here. This setting, when you click it and you change the factor, it's the amount of ambient light that you'll see around an object. Um, has some nice effects and if you kind of look up what ambient occlusion is uh, you can understand that when you render with ambient occlusion it's going to slow down your render a little bit and there's diff it, it comes into play with different ways of lighting your scene so I'm just going to turn that off for now and then I'm going to go to the object data I don't really do too much in object data but you can rename your object here you can also see the things like location, rotation, and scale here. So just be aware that your object data is here. You have constraints. And this would be uh, useful if you're doing something mechanical like say you have an arm, a mechanical arm coming out of something and it rotates but you only want it to rotate so much. So you would add a constraint and you would say um, you know, something like limit the rotation, put a constraint on it. And I'm just going to select this cube because it gives us some more options here that we need to look at. Modifiers. This is a very important setting. Um, modifiers, if we look at modifiers, there's a lot of modifiers here. You don't use all of them all the time. I mean, uh, there's like just a handful that I use very often. It gives Blender a um, another way of expanding what you can do. For example, um, if you add a modifier, I'm going to add a modifier to this cube and I'm going to say um, give it a subdivision surface modifier and I'm going to tell it to have a lot of subdivisions and as you can see that's just pretty much increased all the geometry on my object here and the nice thing about this, I mean you'll, you'll, you'll use this a lot especially when you're doing smooth objects but the nice thing is you can always turn it off where you don't see it. You can even turn it off where you don't render it. Or if you decide that, you know, I really don't want that on my object, you can ex exit and delete it. And it's back the way it was. It's a nice way to modify your object and without, you know, not being able to undo something. So modifiers are really important. And then if you come over here, you have data, object data. And this is where you can get into creating vertex groups and things like that, shape keys. And um, say like if you had, um, I don't know, a, an object that, a mesh that was a human body, maybe you only want to select um, their fingers or something, you could create a vertex group of those fingers and, and just select the group and it will select just the finger. Things like that, but not too much, you know, not really something you have to worry about until you get further into Blender, maybe doing more complex things. Then we have our material, and this is where you would 
add a material to an object. So I might, you know, call this steel material, and then I'll tell it to use nodes, and then I can change the color of it. It's not really a steel color, but we'll call it blue, and we can come down here to the settings, viewport color, and I'm just going to select this. I'm going to grab this little eyedropper. You can use this as well, but I'm going to grab the eyedropper and just tell it to use that. And you can see it changed our uh, viewport color. And when I said use nodes, that's where you get into using the node editor. I'm going to tell it to actually show them. But um, this, is, this is the nodes. And this is something that as you learn Blender and as you learn how to do different materials, you'll get into this node editor. Go back to 3D here. Okay, so that's materials. And then you have textures. So, of course, when you use this, you're going to get into doing UV mappings and assigning your textures and things like that. And I'm just going to drag this out here because there's more. We have particles. And you'll only use that when you're doing things like um, special things like, uh, I don't know, fire, things like that that use little particle systems in order to work correctly. And then you also have physics. And this has to do with uh, when you're doing animations and different things where, say, if I set it where I drop this, this cube and it smashes into 100 pieces, well, with your physics, you can set, you know, does it, you know, does it bounce up a little bit? How, how, you know, what's the force of it falling? Things like that. But that's the physics settings. Now, to tell you the truth, um, starting out, the only ones that are important on this list right now, definitely your render, your world, your modifiers, and I would say your materials. So really you need to worry about those four things and maybe texture later on. And then as you do different things, you might get into those other settings as well. But again, don't get overwhelmed with it. You just be aware that it's there. And as you go on, as you take tutorials and learn different things, you'll be moving into those different uh, menus. Okay, so let's move back into our modeling window here and take a look at what we can do on the modeling side. So we looked at the grid, we have a grid, we have a lamp, we have a, a camera, we have a cube sitting here. So what do you do with this stuff? Well, when you start to work in Blender, let's say we're going to start off with this cube, we have our, um, what we call our 3D, 3D manipulator here. And the X axis is always the red axis. Blue one is Z or Z. And the green one is the y-axis. And it's just a way to move your object around. Now, I'm going to give you three important shortcut, key shortcuts that are the building blocks for Blender. So here's three keys that you definitely need to remember. And that is, one is S for scale. So if I hit S and just move my mouse, you're scaling. If we do G, that's move. So that just moves back and forth, or wherever you want to move it to. And R for rotate. So if you hit R, you're going to rotate. Now, it's doing everything according to the view I'm sitting at right now. But say if I went into top view, so I was going to hit 7 and go into top view. If I hit G to move, it's only going to move along the X and Y axis because I'm already looking from the top view, the Z axis. Uh, same thing with scale. It's going to only scale, well, I'm telling you the wrong thing there. It's going to scale in all axes when I scale something. But if you rotate something, long, as long, long as we're not sizing something, we're okay. If we're rotating something, it's only going to rotate it along that Z axis. And same thing if you go into side view, if you rotate it there, it's really rotating along the X axis that you can't see. But it really depends on if you're in a, a view like that. Now, if you're, you know, you're kind of zooming around and looking at it like that, like I said, and you do a rotate, you're rotating in some, you know, nondescript axis that 
you know, it's just kind of free rotation. And I'm going to tell you that 99.9999999% of the time, you're not going to do that. You're going to be in a certain view and you're going to move it a certain way. So probably best to get, you know, get used to being in your views and basically your free movement like this, you're just inspecting an object. You're just looking at it. You don't want to actually change anything or if you do you're going to do it along certain axes. So I'm going to go back into my seven top view and we're going to expand on the um, keys that we just learned about the S, G, and R keys. So when you do that you can uh, when you scale or rotate or G move an object you can add a number to it and that kind of enhances the way you can work in Blender. So say we wanted to scale this up, I don't know, two of these grid units. Well, it's pretty easy. You would hit S2, Enter. And I'm just going to Control Z to undo. By the way, Control Z, another important keyboard. You probably are aware of that with other programs. But, you know, undo <laughs> cannot be overstressed enough. So the other thing that you can do is you could hit G to move and I'm going to hit 3, enter, and it just moved it over three units. Z to undo that, control Z. And R to rotate, say I wanted to rotate this 45 degrees, I do R, 45, enter, and control Z. Well what if I want to go the other way? Well as you might have guessed R negative 45, enter, control Z. Okay, so that's just a way to use numeric values to try to manipulate your object. Now, so we have this cube here, what can we do with this? I mean, we've just moved it around, rotated it, scaled it, but it's still a cube. I mean, no matter what we do to it like that, it's going to remain a cube. Well, in order to do more, and we're getting into modeling now, I'm going to do more with this cube. We want to hit the tab key. The tab key is also a very important key. Right now we're in object mode. If you look down here, we're going to go into edit mode and the tab key will take you back and forth between these two. So tab in edit mode, tab back out to object mode, tab in edit mode. Okay, so when you are in edit mode, you will see your cube, but you also see the whole thing selected like this in kind of orange or light orange. So what can you do with this? Well, let's first look at the building blocks of geometry. And you can see them down here, three in a row. You have the vertex, the edge, and the face. And if you've done, if you've done anything with other graphics programs, any kind of modeling, then you're kind of aware of these, but I'll just go over them briefly. If we look at the vertex, that is the smallest building block of an object in 3D modeling. So if we're sit, sitting on vertex here, we can select these little points and I can hit G and move them around like that. And I'm just going right, to right click my key to go back to where I was at. But you can select those little individual points. Now you can't scale them and you can't rotate them, but you can move them. They're just, you know, being as the smallest point that you can do, there is, there is no rotation. There's nothing there to rotate. It's just think of it as an atom or something. So um, the next step up is edges. And as you might guess, that would be the edges of your object. And those you can do, you can move them, rotate them, or scale them. So let's, let's just do that to take a look. Um, I'm going to do a G, you can move it around, R, you can rotate that, and S, you can scale, and you, as you can see it's going to scale along that axis that it, the edge is on there. If I chose that one, it's going to scale that way. Makes sense. Okay, and the largest building block of an object is faces, and you'll see these little dots come up, and that's your faces. So same thing, you can rotate them, scale them, and move them. Uh, G, move it around, scale, and rotate. Okay, so 
When do you use vertexes, edges, and your faces? It really depends on what you're doing. Say if this, this surface here, this face, um, right now I have, if, if you select a face, let's see, select this and then reselect that one. When you select a face, you're really selecting all four vertices of that face. Same thing. So, say for example, if you wanted to just size a surface, you probably want to do a face and you know, you can just scale it like that. But, say that you needed just to move over this, these vertices, I'm shift selecting this second one. You may want to, you know, push it along the X or something like that. It really, really depends on what you're doing. And then, of course, if you want to just select one vertex to make a weird object or whatever, you would do that. I mean, it's as you as you move along and as you create things, you'll you'll come to see when you use you know select the different uh, the dif different selections that you have. But let's start to actually create something. So I'm gonna tab back into object mode. And we're going to make a very poor looking car here. So I'm going to um, choose three for my right view. And I could work in this window if I want to. But since I'm showing you stuff here, and it might be easier if I do a control up arrow. If I do a control up arrow, I'll show this entire screen here. Okay, so I'm in my right view. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this cube to look kind of like the shape of a car is the best I can a cube so in order to do that I'm gonna do an SY which will scale along the y-axis and I'll say okay maybe the car is kind of that long as opposed to the height here and I'm gonna go to seven top view and I say well it's really too skinny to be the top of a car so I'm gonna do a scale X and just kind of pull this out a little bit and then kind of roll around and look at it a little bit and say well maybe it's a little bit too thick so I'm going to do a SZ to scale the top a little bit and then I'm just going to grab this and bring it down okay so we're going to say that this is basically as close as you can get to a, the look of a car with a uh, starting out with a cube so that's as far as we can go in object mode so in order to get further, we need to go into edit mode, and we need to start making some changes to this so-called car. So let's do a little bit of, uh, you know, very, very basic modeling just to get you used to changing things in Blender. So in order to do this, I'm going to, I need to add more geometry to this cube. So I'm going to do a control R. And when, when you do that and you move your mouse around, you'll see these edges kind of pop up. And these are going to create loops around the geometry. So I'm going to create one here. When I click on it, you can move it around. And I'm just going to move one right here. Do a control R and create another one here. Move it around. I'm going to put it about right there. Also, and we're going to say that this is maybe the door and this is going to be the top of the car. This would be the hood and this would be the trunk or something. Another thing we need to do is we need to make wheel wells. So I'm going to do a control R and I'm going to roll the mouse button up. When I do that, it's going to create more edge loops. So I only want to do it once to get two edge loops. And just select that and you can move those around as well, but I'm just going to select it again to select off of it. Same thing over here, control R, move the mouse button up once, select it. Okay, so we have some more geometry, more geometry there to work with. So when you select your faces, you'll see a lot more faces there. So what you can do is you say, well, I need a, um, the top of the car to be here. So you could pull this up, and that gives you kind of some windshields here, and a back windshield there, but notice you don't have anything here. So I'm just going to, well, I'm actually I'm going to control Z that. You can also do an E extrude. And when you extrude, you're just basically pulling geometry up and creating new geom geometry. 
E is another very, very, very important um, keyboard shortcut that you'll want to know. So once I have that done, I can hit S to scale that face and just scale it down a little bit like that. So now what I've done is I've created a windshield, you know, side window, and I still have my door, things like that. Again, not very nice looking, but our car is kind of starting to take shape. We can also look at it, you know, kind of in the side view and say, well, this needs to be uh, shorter along the y-axis, so I can say scale, you know, S, Y, and move it along. Another thing, just for your information, if I do an S, Y, and I'm, you know, near the middle of this, S, Y, it's very touchy, but if I'm over here and do a S, Y, it gives you a lot more finer control when you're scaling something and basically when you're doing anything, when you're rotating, moving, all that kind of stuff. And maybe I'll pull this down a little bit. Okay, so then we need our wheel wells. I'm just going to grab this face here. Again, I can try to pull this up. And does it look right? Well, I don't know. I could do an E extrude, but when I extrude that, it's kind of in, extruding it inside, and we still have these side views. So I'm going to Control Z that a couple times. So yeah, maybe I'll just pull this up, and maybe I'll actually just S Y scale along the Y, bring it out like that. And the same thing for this. I'm just going to drag this up. And actually, to get them kind of the same, I can do a Control Z, just undo all that. And I can select this one and Shift Select that one and just pull them both up so they're the same height. So we don't have two different size wheel wheels. I can't do a, a scale Y though, an SY, because it's going to try to scale between the, the difference of the two objects. So uh, if I did an SY, it's going to try to do that sort of thing. So you want to scale those individually if you want to scale that way. Okay, so we have really a very basic car there. I'm going to tab back into object mode. There's our car. And I'm going to control arrow back to our windows here. And say we, we want to work with this now, we want to make it a little bit better looking car, you know, instead of this box car. I'm going to come over to my modifiers and I'm going to add a modifier and I'm going to add the subdivision surface and you can see right off the bat it's making it a lot smoother looking than what it was. I'm going to bump up these subdivisions once so it's even smoother. I'm going to hit T to go in my tools and there's a smooth shade here, the shading, change that to smooth so that takes away that you know that visible geometry there. T back out of that menu and while I'm at it um, we looked at the tools menu a little bit before, but just keep in mind that T brings up these tool menus. Um, this is an important menu that you can bring up, and also N. When you bring up this menu, you'll see things like the location of your object, the scale of your object, dimensions, all this kind of things. Uh, and here you can actually set background images to work with. Um, this is actually where I'm using my screencast keys down here. When I put that add-on in there, it showed up in here. And depending on what add-on you're using, uh, it just depends on how they programmed it, where it's going to show up. But that one happens to be in here. So T and N, just basically toggle menus, those are also very important to know. Another important shortcut is your A key. And that's basically to select and deselect. It's another toggle key. And it's, it's a select all is what it is. Or if you have something, a few things selected, you can hit it and deselect all. Another important key that you'll want to remember is Shift A. And this is where you add different objects. You can uh, add your, you know, different geometry objects. You can add a curve and all this good stuff here. Um, important, of course, is a camera and maybe a lamp, things like that. Okay, so we have our car here, and this is kind of what it looks like. 
but maybe it's a little too, I don't know, futuristic looking or something. So you could tab back into object mode and you can see the basic geometry that you created. The modifier is throwing a lot more um, modifications to it, a lot more subdivisions that you don't see unless you applied this. In fact, let's go ahead and apply it so you can see it. Oh, can't do it in uh, edit mode, it tells you. So we're going to tab back in object mode and apply that. And then if we tab back in, you can see all those subdivisions that it was really putting on it. So I'm going to tab back in object mode. I'm going to control Z until I get my modifier back because I didn't want to apply that. Okay, so I'm going to tab into edit mode and if you add some more geometry to your existing geometry, you can tighten up some of these curves. Like if you want to do a control R, which is basically putting in an edge loop like we did before, and select once, you can move it along that axis and you can shore up some of this. So I might put one there. We might uh, come along here and do a control R. And I'm going to mouse wheel up and make two of them and then select it again and do a SX to scale along the X and you can see how that's kind of given it a better definition so now if we tab out of that we can see that our car is starting to have a little bit more definition so hopefully you can see you know as you use these type of things you can um, start to just modify your object the way you want it to look like and I just hit A to deselect everything. Okay, and now you can kind of see also if you went and selected the vertices, you can grab a specific vertex and say, you know, maybe something's wrong with the way it's set up. Probably you would want to select the other one as well on the other side, but you can kind of move those individually. Actually, I don't... Yeah, I selected... Um, there's another edge there that I can select but anyway you can move those around individually as you need and in order to select more than one you could do a B which is a box select you know and just change things around as you need what I suggest to you if you're you know just starting out in Blender just play with these settings and start doing like um, you can do just move things around like that you can do extrudes, you can extrude it up and then scale it, e extrude some more. You can come in here and R rotate, rotate, move it around, extrude, R rotate, G move it around, extrude, and we got this weird car with a handle or something on it. Come in here, e extrude, bring that up, scale it, e extrude again. I mean, just kind of go crazy with it. Don't try to make anything specific. I mean, just kind of, you know, mess around with it so you understand what is going on with, you know, every time you, you know, how basically how the interface works is what I'm trying to get at here. So, um, I mean, you can come into the windshield and say, okay, I'm going to E extrude, scale down a little bit, E extrude some more, scale inward, maybe put another control R on it so I can get those to be more defined. Control R there, bring it over that way and look at it and voila you created a windshield sorta. Of. So it's really just um, you know you should get in there and just don't worry about you know messing anything up just create something that doesn't really make a whole, maybe a whole lot of sense but will get you familiar you know familiar with the interface Start just pulling, dragging, rotating, sizing, or scaling, and um, you can kind of get some idea of how the interface works. And also, it'll get you used to using the middle mouse button and, and uh, really dollying around this view and everything. So, that's the modeling part of it. I mean, just very basic. There's not a whole lot of key, uh, keyboard shortcuts there, like I promised, but that will get you started. The other thing that you'll want to know, probably right off the bat, everybody does, is how to take a picture of this bizarre creation that you created. 
So, yes, you can do that. So, um, I'll select the uh, light, the lamp, and um, come over here to the lamp settings. And I'm going to make this a sun. And I'm going to leave it on that size. I'm going to say use nodes, and it's already set to emission. The strength is one, but I'm going to bump that up to three, hit enter. And you can, I'm going to go into the side view. You can rotate this, you know, where it's pointing at any way you want to. Seven top view. I'm just going to kind of show the what might be the front of this strange thing. So there's our sun. We got some light on the scene now. Select your camera. If you don't have one, come up here and add a camera. Or you can add a lamp if you need another lamp. And we want it pointing at our object, but we can't see what it's really pointing at right now. I mean, we can kind of tell, but we, we don't know exactly what it's going to do. So, just use one of your other windows and you can do a control zero. That will show you what the, uh, the camera's doing. Another way to do that is do view, go to cameras, and you can set active object as the camera so it'll show you. Now, once you've got that view, there's a, a few things you can do there. You can rotate if you need to. Scaling won't do anything but make the camera bigger, so don't worry about that. You can G move it around if you need to. Okay, so since we need um, more of a view of this here, we can choose G, Z, Z, and that will kind of dolly the camera back. And then we might want to hit a G and just move it into position. So once you have the view you want in the camera, and of course you can come over here and if you need to, I'm going to go into 7 view and just G move the camera around or rotate it. You can uh, move things around that way as well, of course. G move this. Okay, so now we are pretty much ready to render. We have a lamp, we have our camera set up. Uh, we went into the world settings and I made this the background actually for this color. I'm just going to change that to something eh, maybe a little bit darker so we can see our object. Maybe a, actually a different color as well. Okay, and then to render it's F12. So you, here you can see it's doing those uh, different those separate panes as it's rendering. And a fairly simple object, that's why it's going fairly quick. And there's our strange object that we created. So once you have your image, you can come down here, image, save as image, or whatever you want to do with it. I'm going to hit escape, and just show you another way to get a look of your render item that you're creating. If you come down here to these different, uh, different ways to display your object, you have different modes, rendered, material, texture mode, solid is the default what we're in now, wireframe, same thing as hitting Z, toggle Z on your keyboard. But I'm going to choose rendered. Now what rendered does is it gives you a on-the-fly view of your rendered image, which was uh, introduced with the Cycles render engine. It's really nice because you can set it and you can kind of see how things are really looking without hitting F12 and getting a full render every time. Now the thing that controls that, if we go into our render settings, is this preview that we set at 10. So right now we're not getting very much uh, resolution on it, or samples, so we can set this up to, who knows, you know, a thousand if you need it. And as you move this thing around, it's rendering, but you'll see up here that it's still counting up, so it's getting more and more details on your render as it goes. Now as you get more and more complex objects that you're modeling, of course, a thousand will probably be too much for a preview. I usually do something like maybe a hundred and leave it at that. When you're doing an actual F12 render, um, it really depends on how clear you want your model to be, but I usually do something, you know, if I'm doing a final render, it might be anything from a thousand to three thousand and up, but I usually, usually don't go over three thousand. It can take quite a while to render a complex uh, model or scene. So if I set that at a thousand, I'm just going to change this back to solid. 
and do my F12, then you can see up here that the samples are going through a thousand samples for each of these. Um, each tile that it's rendering, it's um, going to go up to a thousand samples on each one. So you're going to get a fairly clear render of your object. So I'm going to escape out of that. I'm going to change this back down to, let's do 50 so it'll go really quick. Hit F12, and there's our object that we rendered. So, what have you learned? You've gone through, in under an hour, you've learned the very basics of Blender to get you up to at least to a point where you can kind of start looking around and looking at some simple tutorials that you see something you might want to model or something you might want to learn in Blender. Every single tutorial that you take from here on out, you're going to learn something new. Uh, at least if it's a fairly good tutorial. Um, in my tutorials, I do have, uh, as far as basic beginning tutorials, I do have like a simple table and chair you might want to do. Or you can look out on the internet and there's just, you know, on YouTube and everything, there's just tons and tons and tons of Blender tutorials. And when I go into doing something that I'm not, haven't done in a long time or maybe haven't done at all, I'll search Blender tutorials and nine times out of ten I'll come up with exactly what I'm looking for. There's so many, you know, so much good help out there that uh, you can take a look and, and do more in Blender that you're trying to do. But like I say, I just recommend starting out with some simple tutorials, create things, um, start moving around, like I said, in the interface and changing the object, doing different things and just play around with the settings and see what it does. You can always go back and you can come up here and say file, you know, set it back to factory settings if you want, or just reload your your uh, startup file or reload Blender and it'll come up back up to your basic setup. And then one more final point of course is if you create something uh, that wouldn't be like this, you probably wouldn't want to save this unless you would just want to save your first thing that you did in Blender, but Make sure that you go in file and save as and save often so that you can uh, not lose with your work as you're uh, working along. So I hope you've enjoyed this fast track on learning Blender and getting up and running. Please subscribe, leave comments, let me know if, it's, if you found this helpful or whatever. And if you can think of any other tutorials that I can come up with that will help you and that might be helpful to others. I'll definitely consider making some because um, I've got a lot on my on my plate as far as tutorials coming up, but I'm always looking for more things to fit into my list to create for people. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next tutorial.